All right, so I was showing you at the end of the last video and getting kind of my head warped a little bit by it, how I could extend the moment of just the bird being here. And there's, there's a couple ways. They're a real pain <laughs> to do just because I have that sun that I always have to account for. But what I could do is make a patch. And I did that on this combined layer. So now I have a patch here where I can show the bird moving back and forth like that right, on my frames. The problem is I have to remove that patch from every other layer. Because remember, all this does is program the eyeballs. It also programs things like opacity. So I don't want that patch, but I want the other patch on those other layers. Except for the ones where the patch doesn't work, right? And this is why we do a separate stage file than assets, because if you try to animate on the timeline with all the different asset layers, you'll just drive yourself nuts. So that's why I like to build it in the assets and then bring them over. Okay, so all I have is a little bit of extra time at the end where the bird kind of dances around. And it's going to look jittery because it's just going between two frames. But let's test it out. Let's play it. There we go. And what I like is that on the first one, the head goes down slower. On the second one, it just snaps right back. And now, actually, I like the little extra movements because it's like the bird is just kind of pleased with himself before it happens again. Right? So you can do that. Why I wanted to show you that is that I didn't actually, I have more frames now than I have layers. I don't want to update right now. All right. I have more frames than I have layers because I can repeat frames as much as I want. I can even layer frames on top of each other. This is called animating in the timeline. So if I create a new frame, I could even, this doesn't make any sense for my animation, but it might for yours. I might take the opacity down on one frame and put it up on another, right? So now I have a frame that is two frames kind of warped together. It's kind of ghosting. And if I wanted to move that frame somewhere, like after it snaps back, which I think is here, right? It goes from that to this to this, right? Even though that pizza is in the wrong place. Let's see what that looks like. So you can play with what are called uh, tweens that you just animate. Here it's going to be. Yeah, so it doesn't help a lot, but you can play with these kind of weird transitions, right? And I can set the timing for them individually. So this is that weird new frame I created, frame 20. I could set its timing to be uh, three times faster than the ones around it, especially to hide that little glitch of the sun moving up, right? What I can't do is I can't change my layers when I have frames outputted. Otherwise, it affects that layer everywhere. And so that's where things can really get screwed up. Now, if you work enough with, within the timeline tool in Photoshop, you can really use it to your advantage. You can even create uh, automatic transitions between layers. You can create what are called movement tweens between layers. Yeah, but I don't like that little glitchy thing, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, so now that I like my animation cycle and I've kind of fine-tuned my timing, I think this timing makes sense. I could try it faster, but I think that kind of loses the charm of it a little. It's also going to be a little bit faster than I see it here because this is Photoshop processing it with millions of pixels. So it's a little bit slower than the GIF will be able to process it. So now we got to save our file. This is an important file to save. I'm going to leave it open, but save it. Remember, it's my stage file that has all the finished animation and the timeline. Then 
I'm going to say file and instead of save as a copy to put it onto canvas and instead of save as as a new name I need to go to and this is important export for the first time in Photoshop we need to go to export and we need to export it as a save for web legacy file which means kind of an old online format because graphic interchange format gif files or gif files if you want to use that they are one of the oldest forms of digital image and so to get photoshop to process into that instead of into a video file or something else you need to go to file export save for web legacy file export save for web web legacy this will give you this screen and you can see at 150 pixels per inch at 8 by 8 inches this is plenty big enough for any kind of screen display this is bigger than my high def screen but a gif can only go up to 256 colors so this is how it it down samples it to be a gif you say save the only change i make is change the quality to bicubic smoother i just like that a little bit better than than straight nearest neighbor and then i say save and then you want to move it to the desktop you can keep the same name it's just going to be as a gif file and then we can test it so i'm going to go to my desktop and i have my gif file i'm going to mark it as orange this is what's going to go to canvas but let's test it first you can only test gif files in a web browser right so i'm going to right click and i'm going to say open with and for the first time i'm going to use safari because why not I feel bad for Safari. Let's use it for something. And you can see it moves a little bit faster, just a hair faster than when I previewed it in Photoshop. And even though it's only 256 pixels, it looks clean enough, right? It's clear. And my pizza's moving, and my movement's there, and the transformation's clear. Hopefully it's a little unexpected and kind of fun to watch. Right? So my GIF works, I can put that to Canvas. That's the next thing after my storyboard sketch. And remember, you don't need to have an animatic. Okay. So I'm going to call it Final GIF Animation. And I find it on my desktop. I can actually just drag and drop it in. Or I can use the, the upload image. But because it's a GIF, and I saved it not as save as GIF, because you can do that, but that will flatten it to your first frame. Because I did save for web legacy, file export save for web legacy. I think that's a good size. Um, it's automatically going to start playing. as soon as it's in the web browser. Now I just need one more component. Now that I finished my animation and I like it, I need to make my refined storyboard. And our refined storyboard is going to be 30 by 40 inches, but at a low resolution. And it basically equates to 8 by 10 by 300. This is how it works. I have time to do it. We go to our stage file. And what we do is we go to our timeline, and we're careful not to mess with anything. We go to our window options, where we first flattened frames, or we made frames from our layers. Now we're going to turn our frames into layers. So any kind of combinations, like all that patching and stuff I did, I'm now going to flatten all of those into individual layers. And so you'll see, on top of all my layers that I had initially, I had 20-something, now it's going to put frame, frame 1, frame 2, frame 3, all the way through to frame 23, because I have a 23 frame animation. That is a flip book. Then I can go and I can erase everything underneath it, layer 25 down through layer 1. This is just cleaning it up. So now I don't have, it's just super simple. Each frame is showing one layer group, or one layer. All together, all works. That's a good time to save your stage. That's very understandable. 
Now, now that I've saved it, I want to look at my rough storyboard sketch and I have to pick the frames that are going to tell my story. So I know I need frame one, but I don't really need the last frames. And I like to think around the middle frame. What's the good middle frame? And I can kind of click around on the frames and see, well, I want that accordion action to happen, right? So that's a good middle frame. Which one is that? That's frame eight. So I'm going to mark frame eight with green. That's my middle frame, at least for now. Now what I need to do is I need to bring guides around all four sides of it, right? And then I need to grow the canvas size around it. This is layout. This is what we need to do to make our images print ready for the midterm. I need to center this image on a bigger piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is go to image canvas size. And instead of eight by eight, which is what my image size is, I'm going to make the canvas behind it 30 inches by 40 inches. That should be familiar. That's the largest paper size the commercial printers can accommodate, right? Okay, now I've got this stack of animation cards, like a flip book, right in the middle of a table. Think of this as like a picnic table with a gingham tablecloth. Because that hurts my eyes, I'm going to go back before frame one. And before I add a layer, I'm going to select all these frames and move them to the trash. And then I'm going to close my timeline. Window, take my timeline off. Now I'm going to save my file as a copy. I don't want to overwrite my stage. Instead, I just want to save it as my refined storyboard. So this is a third Photoshop file now for this project. Now, because the, the gray hurts my eyes, I'm going to make a new layer at the bottom. I'm going to fill that with white. Edit, fill, 100% white. And now <laughs> I need to deal out the cards, right? I need to place them exactly where I want them. This is called layout. In order to do that, I not only need the guides, which show that my image eight by eight inch square is perfectly centered. I need the rulers. So I'm going to go to view, make sure my rulers are on. And then I also will need the grid. So I can go to view, show grid, or the shortcut for that is command apostrophe. Command semicolon is the shortcut for guides. Command apostrophe is the shortcut for the grid. Now, if you set it up at eight by eight inches at 150 pixels per inch, now I can use the rulers and the grid to make move a guide one inch and make one inch gutter, uh, gutters around my center image. And they'll stick right to the, the grid. Then I can turn off the grid with command apostrophe. And now I have nine slots to move my cards. I already know what the center slot is. It's frame eight, right? I already know what my first slot is. That's going to be frame one usually. So I'm going to turn off auto select layer and I'm going to turn on select frame one. I'm going to deal from the bottom of the deck and put it there. The next frame, let's try frame five. No, that's too abrupt, right? So I don't want frame five. What do I want? I think I want maybe frame three. There we go. And then I want frame five, but I want it in this position. See how we're telling the story? Then I want it to, to start moving the head. Let's try frame six. There we go. And then frame eight, full accordion. And then let's see, what's frame nine? I got the pizza in there. Let's move frame nine. Uh, actually, let's do frame eight instead of the middle. Let's put that all the way here. And let's do frame seven in the middle. So you can see he's grabbing and now he's lifting up and the accordion's going. 